What's up StarCraft fans, last time we did level 1 Tychus, this time we're going to do level 1 Zeri Tool. So let's go to his progression. So when you're leveling, yeah first you get 100 supply, you get better units and you have artifact fragments, 2 of them. The second, at level 2, uh, you get the third fragment that will get you the avatar form and the avatar of essence. You usually just want avatar form at lower levels, so you have the storm thingy. Be pretty good in combination with your forces. Level 3, you have Passageway enchant uh, Enhancement, Cash 1. So you'll have the uh, uh, the blink for your uh, boosters. Uh, you'll have the uh, energy regen, or rather an increase in the energy regen for the shield guards. And you'll have the uh, the swipe thing, where the uh, Void Templar's blink will deal damage to everything between the starting point and the end point of its blink. So everything there, caught in the blink, will take damage. That are enemies, that is. And the uh, uh, the Tesseract Cadence and the Monolith will, will be able to project themselves uh, to a different location. So this is probably what will allow you to play Brutal Difficulty with relative ease. Level 4, a Brogator, not that great of a unit. It's nice to have, but don't really I don't really use it that often. I used to, but not anymore. Uh, you'll have here at level 5, the Monolith. This is uh, Zeratul's Splash Damage. Uh, static defense, pretty good, and this will improve your uh, Tesseract Cannon projections uh, by reducing the cooldown by 25% and increasing damage absorbed, so it will be even better. So uh, yeah, level 5, pretty good upgrade. A massive upgrade actually if you're going Cannon style. Next upgrade, you will have the uh, the Enforcer, your Immortal. Uh, have it have the knockback ability when it shoots. And uh, you'll have faster cooldowns for the Purification Nova. And uh, increase the movement speed of uh, the Observers. Next you'll have the Serdoth Legion, so it's the third set. It's, it's the third set under, under, uh, the, uh, uh, under the uh, Artifact Power, so you'll have a third set here. So for the first part, or the first one you'll have Serdoth Legion. Se uh, se se second one you'll have the Voice Suppression Crystal, and third one uh, you'll uh, have the uh, blink ability uh, cooldown thingy. And finally, empowered, or rather, at level 8, empowered legions, your legendary legi legions will be better. So these legendary legions are top power abilities called them by Zertul. They are temporary warriors and heroes, and they will do a lot of damage, but they can't be destroyed. So yeah, uh, do not assume they will just kill everything. They usually will, but uh, they can be overwhelmed. Level 9, a pretty good upgrade, the Void Arai. This will unlock. Zeratul's mobility uh, all around the map. They do cost supply, but it's uh, it's very good for Zeratul's mobility. Very useful for maps like Cradle of Death, Temple of the Past, Missed Opportunities, the the big maps. Dying Vermilion, very good, very good there. This one will make level ten chronometry will reduce the build time for your uh, you know conductor structures. So yeah, faster build times. So level eleven, you'll have more upgrades. For your uh, for your yes, this will unlock the triple blink for Zer tools and boosters, and this will allow the shield guards to create the uh, the reflective barrier that will reflect projectile attacks. Pretty good, and uh, this will make your Void Templar uh, able to uh, basically have Garden Shell that will regen it to full health. And finally, you will have uh, your cannons and Monus uh, absorb more damage, so they'll be even tankier. Level 12, uh, this will reduce your supply, or reduce the, the needed supply of shield guards from 2 to 1, and it will make the Void Allies uh, go down from 2 supply to 1 supply, and the Observers not cost any supply at all. So, yeah, this just improves how many of each unit you can get by making your uh, utility units more supply efficient. Level 13, more upgrades for your. Uh, for your uh, rub uh, yeah, for your rebel units, so you'll have the uh, barrier become better for the immortal. You'll have the uh, the splitting the splitting thing for the uh, Ambrogator's purification nova, and you'll be able to uh, increase shield regen for units in the void array uh, for the uh, for the void array, yeah. And uh, your uh, Zolaga watchers will have a larger vision range by fifty percent. This one will allow your uh, Avatar of Essence to demote, yeah, this uh, level 14 is when the demote unlocks, so I don't usually get the Avatar of Essence till level 14, you can get it, it will still buff your units, 
But I generally only get level 14 when it actually, you know, demotes the enemies. At level 15, uh, Zertu will gain additional shields, and uh, yeah, it, just Zertu will become better with each uh, artifact rag that you collect. So when you're when you play at normal difficulty, it can start you can start playing on hard difficulty at about level five, and you can start playing on brutal difficulty. At around, I would say level eight. Yeah, you can if you're playing a normal, you can play hard at level five and play brutal at level eight. If you're on hard difficulty, you can pl you can start playing brutal on level five. So yeah, if you play brutal, obviously Zertul won't have much of a problem. So uh, we're gonna do Scythe of Amon today. Um, thank you to Legendary Sooner and Trent Tent who are supporting me in the mobilization raids here, and Darth and Shadow Archon who are supporting me in the Pulse Cannon tier. And thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. So. Uh, uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, let's let's hear about the map, Ryan. Sky of Amon is the map where we have to destroy five void slivers pre-placed on the map before timer runs out. Each void sliver we destroy adds more time and gives more powers to the remaining ones. All right, so as you can see on the mini map on the lower left, there are five targets pre-placed. These are the void slivers, these giant tower things. So we have to destroy all five of them. So we initially have a seven and a half minute timer, or rather an eight minute timer, and we have to destroy a voice sliver within the said time. So whenever we destroy a voice sliver, we get a time extension, and uh, the remaining slivers gain about 2,000 extra shields, and they will also get uh, more abilities. So uh, you can see there's creep on the map, yeah, there, if you're Zerus, you can see there's creep, these purple spots. That's enemy creep. So you, from this, you can immediately tell what the Zerg, what the enemy race will be. So if the creep is on this left side, the enemy is Terran. So the attack waves, that is, will be Terran. If the creep is in the center, like this one, the enemy will be Zerg. And if the creep is on this right side, this first bonus area, the enemy will be Protoss. So. Um, for now, you can see that I'm just kind of uh, yeah, building my stuff. I have two uh, warp gates here and a cybernetic core, which will complete soon. So once the cybernetic core completes, or cybernetic core complete, or the core forge completes, I will be able to make the shield guards, which will be my initial forces here, since they're pretty good at uh, dealing with uh, Zerg compared relative to uh, relative to uh, the Slyers. And by Zerg, I mean Zerglings, because uh, they're hit scan and they uh, they deal damage faster, and they can regen energy. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's actually easier. Of course, later on, uh, your uh, your Void Templar will get a, a blink ability at, at, at higher levels. Void Templar are better against Zerg since since when they blink, they clean out the Zerglings. But for now, I'll settle with the shield uh, the shield guards because of their uh, ranged abilities. And yeah, the, the faster cooldown of the attack. So yeah, this is a uh, uh, relatively fast cooldown. So you can see they're basically sentries, and they they will shoot, and they don't really have any abilities for now because you're level one. But later on, they will gain the ability to kind of get that barrier around them, which will reflect projectile attacks. So you can see I've also finished my constructs uh, facility, and I'm making an enforcer, which is basically Zerto's version of the uh, immortal. You can see I'm still uh, I have. But 22 worker saturation here. That is intentional. So I can kind of go here fast. So you can see. Yeah, they're dealing that pretty fast, these Zerglings. And they don't overkill a lot. So once Zeratul is out, I uh, I set him out here right away. He, I used Blink to, to snipe all these, or to smash all these Zerglings. And I created this wall, I created this wall here so that they won't be able to kind of destroy the middle line. It's pretty necessary. So once you have Zeratul out, I, you gotta use your prophetic vision. This uh, this eye, this eye ability, not the letter I. This is the eye, the seeing eye ability. That will reveal the spot on the map where the artifact fragment is. So what you want to do is Zero Tool is you want to use your production structures, either your nexus or your gateways or both of them, to kind of right click on the map. So you uh, yeah, select your production structure, right click on the mini map. This is right click all around here on the mini map. And see if the rally line. So you can see there's an orange rally line here for the uh, nexus, and a white rally line here 
for the gateway. So you want to collect, you want to select these buildings and right-click all around the map to find where the where the uh, where the uh, uh, rally line appears on the prophetic vision. This circle right here. Once you see the rally line, you try to inch a little closer in on the minimap. Like for example, if the uh, if the rally if you're clicking if you're clicking right here. Uh, on your neck, if you're routing here for your nexus and the line appears here, like all the way here, you kind of shorten, you, you kind of, yeah, click along the line, like retreating a bit, uh, a bit each time until you finally see where the rally point is. So the rally point, of course, is where the, uh, the rally line ends up being and where your units will send once they, uh, spawn. So once you see the, 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 the uh, the rally point here, you and and that's where you're clicking. You've basically found where where the artifact fragment is. So what you do is Zer tool is you use Zer tools of uh, uh, fast travel ability, the Void Seeker, to fast travel to to the location where the artifact fragment is and collect that fragment using once again the prophetic vision. Uh, of course, uh, the exception is if you just know uh, based on the terrain. If you play this a billion times. You will kind of know where things are based on what the terrain looks like. So here I used the uh, Teleburst Legion. So yeah, if the enemy is Zerg, you will kind of want to generally use the Teleburst Legion because the Teleburst Legion has the Spins a lot and Storm. So both of those are good against Zergling basically, which I would say like 80% of Zergling or 80% of Zerg competitions are Zergling based. So it's generally a safe bet to go with the uh, the Teleburst Legion. You can see they are doing pretty good damage here to these buildings. You notice that I like going for this expansion or, or this shard first. Technically, this shard is closer, the one just uh, just to the northeast or the west, northwest of my base. A lot of players do like this do like this as their first shard. Because it also offers easy access to bonus, but I'm telling you guys, going here is a mistake, especially if you're low level and you just want to win. Because this this shard, this void sliver right here, is where your expansion is located. You can see uh, mineral patches and gas geysers here for both players. So what I like to do is attack this shard first, clear out the enemies here in the, in the void shard, and once that is destroyed, I start my nexus so I can saturate my base right away and become more powerful. So yeah, the the main objective is, all, is always the most important one. That's why uh, I generally try to go for this one first. I'd rather lose the bonus here. It's not even. It's just the first bonus. You can still get two of the bonuses, and by doing so, you can lose out on about six hundred sixty-seven exp. Maybe like uh, if you factor in like the bonus, maybe thirteen hundred or something. But that is nothing. That's actually nothing compared to the 40,000 EXP you get by completing the main objective. So yeah, my recommendation is to go for the expansion shard first as your first shard, take your expansion, and then if you can rush to the bonus, great. But if you can't, that is absolutely fine because again, the more important objective is the main objective. And yeah, you can see even before this liver goes down, I've already started my Nexus. I brought this probe along. From the start, I have it kind of sitting over here by sneaking downstairs here, and then, yeah. So, the fact that I was able to start my Nexus early means I can also saturate early. Which means I'll have earlier income. Which means the income I'll have earlier on can be made into earlier army, which will be able, which I'll be able to use to attack the shards uh, in time. Because again, level 1, you need all the help you can get. And you can see I still have the Constructs Bay. I'm not going to mass a lot of Immortals or a lot of Enforcers, but I want the uh, the barrier ability for the Enforcers anyway. So I'm getting the uh, I'm getting the Constructs Bay. It's worthwhile. It's just 200 metals from gas. The Immortal itself costs 300 metals, so, or rather 750 metals and 300 gas. So it's still worth it to spend 200 to uh, keep it alive for longer. So I'm just chilling out here. You can see in my production tab, I'm just making more workers, and I'm, uh, yeah, kind of rallying them here to this expansion. I start, yeah, double worker production, and uh, I just try to get enough money for an enforcer. Yeah, I start the enforcer, and then 
Start another worker. I select a few workers here and transfer them to the expansion. We can have better saturation. Okay, so. My goal now is to intercept this attack wave here, and then I will try to reverse clear. So, what reverse clear means is you clear a back or a, a, a back and base first for the enemy before you clear the forward ones. The reason you want to do reverse clear on Scythe of Amon is because the defenses on the last shard or on the back shard, the north, the north west shard, are difficult to break and they're further away than these close ones. So whenever you reinforce, you have a longer time rallying your dudes all the way to this last uh, to this uh, far shard than is for example on this near shard. That's the reason why. Yeah, I want to attack this first while it's still weak. Like, when, later on when it's strong, it's really strong. But this shard, even if you save this one for the last, it will still be not as strong as this top left one. So yeah, um, uh, short version, you want to attack this shard as early as you can because it gets really strong later on. The shards, yes, the other shards, yes, they also get strong, but not as strong as, as the top left one. So you want to eliminate it early. So you don't have to worry about it later on. Also, I've tried this. I've tried this one many times, and honestly, I can't. I I can't even with the max dot zero tool on me. I can't fight this shard with a level one zero tool. I uh, yeah, I cannot take that top left. I actually need to. Yeah, I, I cannot take that top left shard if I save it for last. So the only option I have is to take it when it's still early, when it's still early, when it's not that strong. So what I do is zero to it is I kind of run past these defenses, and I get this fragment. I fast travel to this location. So the thing about this look, the thing about this map is, the detection is pretty limited. So what I, what I'll what I'll try to do is snipe this oracle, which is the only detection that Amon has, and once it's down, I basically have free reign to fight this Void Shard, but um, as I mentioned before, sometimes things don't work out uh, initially as you planned. I was trying to fight that Oracle, but I couldn't quite get it in range before Zerto died and Zerto was surrounded, so that was definitely a mistake. I should have uh, baited that Oracle a little bit behind before doing this cle the cleave thing, and uh, I'll have to wait. The good news is I took out an uh, a Shard early, so I have a bit of a runway before I need to actually fight another Shard. So. What I'll do is uh, try to uh, stay calm, stay focused, you, you, I can still win this mission. Let's gather that army, save up enough money for a Teldos Legion maybe. Well, now we can use the ratings. But yeah, uh, this army is still pretty decent. Yeah, you can see I'm straight up fighting the uh, hybrids. Okay, there we go. I eventually used the Teldos Legion. Clean out. I don't think I lost anything in that fight. It's pretty good. That's pretty important. So yeah, uh, once again, the same lesson from Raider video. Just keep, just keep spending your money. Keep making things that you can afford. Right now, I'm not spending because I'm trying to save up 300 minerals for a uh, for an enforcer. I'm clearing out these uh, these uh, uh, these camps over here with my uh, with my Telbus Legion because a you want to use your Telbus Legion instead of just standing them idle. You want to get value out of your Telbus Legion and b. You never know when you actually, if you actually need to kind of walk up here and take out this last shard with your army. So I'm trying to just, uh, yeah, trying to make my way using, getting, extracting as much value as I can from the Celebrus Legion. And this time, their value is as a decoy. They actually just absorb all that fire away from Zeratul. So you can see, this being the second shard, it now has a new ability. So the ability is basically the stun thing. Uh, which, yeah, it's a big circle, and it stuns all enemy units that are caught inside. As you can see, Zertul is temporarily stunned. But it's only temporary, so Zertul can once again, yeah, it's a big range. So what I do with Zertul is kind of blink out a little bit, and then blink back in, and keep fighting. So this thing now has 6,000 max shields and 1,500 health for a total of 75,000, or 7,500 hit points. So, yeah, uh, I use the, uh, the voice sta the, the stasis thing kind of fight this uh, area. I called out another uh, Talbos Legion, again, just as a decoy. 
so I can fight these things. Or yeah, so I can kind of not take so much damage with Zeratul. I try to target down this Oracle, and it goes down to the Storm, which is pretty nice. So now all I have to do is, uh, yeah, overpower, overwhelm this Void Shard. And you can see Zeratul was again stunned. That's why I kind of try to blink out when I can. And once this shard goes down, it, that's a big. If this, that's a big. Uh, that's a big win. If this shard goes down, it's actually a big win for me. Because again, this this shard is definitely the hardest one if you save it for last. So taking out for second, taking out second means that I won't get to deal with the hardest shard at its most powerful form. I will be able to deal with all these ones in their most powerful forms, but not the last one. So yeah, I, I really want to take that out early. And you can see I've been making use in the background, so my army is still pretty decently sized. I'm at 85 supply. I have detection. I have a lot of shield guards. And have 5 enforcers, so I'm pretty, pretty secure. Also, I'm making more cannons here at the middle line because the enemies have a tendency. Again, preparation pays off. So you want to make the cannons before you actually need them. Try to bait these guys. I just uh, bait them into me. I don't have to take too much damage. Yeah, that moral is at the yellow. Now it's at the orange, so that was that, 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 that is definitely a mistake on my part. The good news is I didn't actually lose supply. You can see I'm actually up to 90 supply now out of 100. So I'm close to maxing out and getting the most powerful version of this army in particular. So I'm waiting for this attack wave. Once it hits, I will clean them out. I use Zeratul to use the uh, the cleave, the shadow cleave on those scourge to not make them target my lone area, which is this observer. I do not, I, do, I definitely do not want the scourge targeting observer because that is my only detect in this game. You see, there's a singular garden here. I'll range my cannons. It's kind of annoying, but Zeratul uh, luckily can fight this garden and then run back to the front where my army is making its way. So my next target is this shard. I'm targeting this shard not because it's easier, but because strategically I would prefer fighting two shards along the same path and having to ping pong back and forth fighting two different shards. I'd rather clean out this last one and only worry about like, having a singular side to defend rather than, have, rather than ping ponging back across two shards. So this next, this next crystal or this next void shard has this ability to spawn death grip crystals. These death grip crystals will stun a predetermined number of health from your units. Like I think it's 800 health, so it'll, it'll stun as many units as it takes to get to 800 health. And the, these units won't be able to attack. Your units are immune, but anything else can be stunned with the timer. So if this this timer runs out, the unit gets into killed. No no response, no ability to uh, retaliate. They just get killed. So what I have to do is take out this shard, focus it down, just focus it down so that it will be forced to release uh, my army. You can say I'm using Zeratul to snipe the dude lords. I do not want the dude lords to have free reign because they make free units. I'm trying to target it down with Zeratul, whereas my army is still trying to uh, smash the rest of this base. Also, these void rifts, as you know from the mutation, these void rifts spawn free units for the enemy. So I'm using Zerg to take them out so that I will not have to deal with as many units as I otherwise would. And with that, uh, the shard is taken care of. Again, because I took out the uh, the big units. Like the Death Grip Crystal is a unit, and it's an area even, so that my uh, my enforcer can actually take it out. And uh, yeah, I took out the the three unit spawners, the Dude Lords and the Carriers, so that my units won't eventually get overwhelmed. Also, the Banshees. Banshees also important target. So the order is uh, Death Death Grip Crystal first. And the dude lords and the carriers and then the banshees. You can say I'm maxed out right now. So the only way I can get even more supply than this, so you can see this next shard has a, uh, a purple circle right here, which will stun all our units inside this area. So you want to avoid that. That ability uh, uh, is called unstable energy. I like to call it the blue fort because it's funnier. So let's call it the blue fort. So you generally want to avoid the area of the blue fort so that you will not take extra damage on your forces. So yeah, my observer has made its way here. Yeah, as long as the storm is still there, it will still do damage. So you can see I'm sending probes out here. 
That is intentional. I am sending these probes intentionally to their deaths because I have excess resources and not enough supply for army. So I'm sacrificing these uh, these probes so I can get an extra enforcer out because it's building right now. That is the value of sacrificing a workers near the end. So the lesson for today as Zeratul is sometimes you have to sacrifice workers to get more army supply and dodge the and dodge the blue forts. Because again, the blue forts will deal a lot of damage. You do not want to fight the blue fort. The focus is oh, we gotta split. We gotta split these. Yeah. That was a sexy split. Normally I normally wouldn't be able to do that. But I'm pretty I'm pretty uh well I I did that this time. Okay, so the fourth chart goes down because again we uh, we had a good strategy. Uh, as I mentioned before, this fourth chart, even at, at e this fourth chart I took out, it's the closest chart, so it's actually the weakest one. This chart is the weakest one, and by saving it for fourth, even when it's at its strongest, it's still not strong enough to withstand my my uh, my, my army with the uh, Talbot Legion. So I just kind of yeah, I kind of just pushed my way through it. The hardest part of fighting that shard was that it coincided with an attack wave that was also heading toward me. So I fought a shard and an attack wave in the same spot. But um, yeah, this shard being the weakest, it actually fell pretty easily. So now we only have one shard remaining. We'll try to extract value from the Telbrus Legion again. Same thing with the earlier extract value from the Telbrus Legion by sending it forward, try to get yeah, as much damage as we can. Even sending our army to attack alongside just so we can uh, yeah, advance as far forward as we can with the investment that we paid for in time units. The, another attack weight heading from the north. It's actually heading toward me. So yeah, the nice thing about uh, this shard is that with, with coincide with this wave, you can intercept it easily. And that is exactly what happened. So, you can see I'm trying to push it here. I have. I also have a probe here. I do not intend to sacrifice this probe, but I'm floating 3,800 minerals, so I'm intending to use that to invest in static defense, like right around here. The static defense will be helpful, so that I'll, ha I'll have a place to retreat to in case the army at this last shard is too strong. Again, preparation pays off. If you have static defense over here, even if your army is not quite strong to fight this whole wave alone, you will have something to fall back on. Such as a wall of cannons. So yeah, I want to avoid that blue fort. Same thing as before, avoid the blue fort as much as possible. I use the uh, 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 stasis thing, the stasis beam, to lock these into place to give the Telbus Legion and my army a better chance of survival. You can see this last shard has all the abilities of the prior shard. You can see it has the stun thing. It had the Death Blue Crystal over it and also has the Blue Fort, so I gotta split against it. I gotta do everything. Yeah, the stun thing. But, yeah, it also now has 12,000 shields on top of 1500 health. And yeah, yeah, another Death Blue Crystal right here. So, the longer it stays active, the more ability it'll, it'll be able to throw at us. So, I just wanna take it out. Yeah, I focused on that Banshee because the Banshee deals a ton of damage. Several tons of damage, in fact. I just kinda right click on it. Another Death Blue Crystal. Take that out. So I can have all my units attacking this Void Shard and defeating it and ending the map, soloing this map at level 1. And that was pretty difficult. I took a lot of attempts to beat this at level 1. And going the, and reverse clearing the top left shard is actually required just to beat this. Just to beat this uh, this mission at level 1 is uh, it's pretty difficult. But I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea for it, also please leave that in a comment. You can see the score screen that, yeah, it's all me. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty even. My enforcers end up dealing the most damage because their anti air is it's insanely strong. Talbus Legion combined for slightly less, and the uh, Zeratul Shield Guards, pretty good. They combined for about the same amount of damage. So, yeah. Um, next week, we'll have. Step boy, so stay tuned for that.